As I said earlier, the grip is your steering wheel. And what do I mean by that? Well, when you're driving your car and you turn to the right or turn to the left, by turning your steering wheel, the car is going to go in that direction. Well, so is your golf ball. So if you're using it as a steering wheel, how would the hands play a part in that? When I put my hands on, as we've described, the thumb at 2 o'clock, the thumb at 11.59 with the trigger and a pinch, well, that would be your steering wheel going straight down the road, at least for 90% of the golfers. There are a few that we might have to change it for. All right, but, but looking at the grip, if I took my, my thumbs and moved both of them over toward 11 o'clock, all right, my hands would have turned to the left of the center of the club, all right, and then when I swing, the club face would be more open. So that would make my club face steer to the right and make my ball go to the right. All right, let's use that same analogy. If I would have taken my both thumbs and moved them to the right on the clock, so now my thumb instead of being 12 o'clock is at three o'clock, and my top hand thumb over to one o'clock. Now, I, and I see a lot of this, by the way. So if my hands are both turned that way, when the club comes through, the club face is going to be steering my club and ball to the left. All right, because my arms have to rotate to accommodate where the grip is on the club. All right, so if I go too much left, I'm going to the right. That's where the slicers come from. If I go too much to the right, all right, that's where the hookers come from. Now, not only when you have your hands too far to the right, again, I refer to it as strong, what happens is you're going to deal off the club, and when you get to the ball, it's not only going to be pointing to the left side of the highway, but it's going to go very low. So you're the left side of the fairway, if you want to call it that and it's going to go very low and you're going to have this low running ball you say well i hit it far but it's really going low and left it's very hard to keep the ball on the green that way now when i see golfers that most times we've been taught to put the thumbs on top of the club and most golfers then really have a slice i would say the majority of the golfers i see has have slices so by just simply adjusting the left hand as we've described earlier and adjusting the right hand that should just about fix what's ailing you. If it's still a little off, two o'clock is not written in stone. You can go 230, you can go a little bit more until the club face will come back to straight. But I'd like to see the grip pretty much in a the same position every time. We call that neutral. All right, another little way that I did, I'm gonna to turn to the side here, and another way that I see the grip is incorrect is people will put the club down on the ground, and when they do, the club will go up through the pads. If you remember earlier, I said I wanted the heel pad on top of the club so that you could hold it with one finger. Well, if it gets high on that pad, and when you close your hands, you're gonna have a little bit of a gap in the back here. And that's gonna cause the club to wobble. It's gonna make you um, um, harder to hold on. Your grip pressure is going to have to be a lot tighter. So if, if you have it in the right place on the little finger and the pad on top, then there's no Oh, open spaces or uh, just places for it to wobble. All right, so that's a common mistake I see. So the two most common is the thumb straight down the center, and the second one is on the glove hand, the club coming through the middle. You can, it's hard to bend your wrist. It's hard to get any leverage or speed, so you lose quite a bit there. Okay, so that that's one of the areas that is going to help your grip be a, be more secure. By the way, okay, on the right hand, as we mentioned the the pinch between the thumb and index finger, if that gets open, all that does is allow for the club to wobble somewhat. And when it gets up to the top, if you go back pretty quick, now the club's gonna get a little floppy at the top. So if somebody says you have a little floppy at the top, all you gotta remember is to give it a little bit of a pinch with your trigger, and now that makes a, a nice little secure bridge for you to hang on to the club. It makes it work a little better. Okay, I have a little trick here for you to find out if your grip pressure is any good. If I were putting my grip on, standing up nice and straight, and had the club in front of me, all right, and I could grip the club as tight as I could, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to count to 10, and I'm going to grip on, and, and you're going to see veins popping out inside of my neck, and, you, and you're going to say, wow, that's much too tight. Well, every time I count a number, my hands are going to get tighter. You might even see them just kind of even quivering. That's how tight I want to get. All right, one, kind of loose. Forearms, relaxed, shoulders relaxed. Number two, I'm a little tighter. Three, I'm getting a little tighter. Four, five, six seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm, a, I'm as tight as I can hold it. Barely can be able to talk, it gets so tight. Now I'm gonna back down to nine, to eight, to seven, to six, to five, 
to four, somewhere between four and six, depending on how strong your arms and hands are. You don't need to be a 10, and I don't want you to be a one, but you wanna feel like the club is held lightly in your hands. You have a mechanism in your brain that when you're swinging this 14 ounce club around in an arc, the hands will generally get a little bit tighter. You don't know it, but you won't throw the club out of your hands. But if you hold on so tight, your forearms, your hands, your shoulders will get so tight that you can't create any club head speed. So I'd like you to practice that. Hold on real tight, relax, relax the grip back down to three, four, five, in that range. I'm gonna say four to six is really where I want you. And that's what the grip pressure should feel like when you start. Now, there's one other little thing that I'm gonna mention here about grip pressure. When you're swinging the golf club, if you went out today in the backyard and you took a little seven iron and went to hit a little chip shot or eight iron, when you do that chip shot, I'd like you to take the club back slowly I'd like you to deliver it to the ball and chip it slowly, and I want you to follow through slowly. If you could honestly tell yourself, my grip didn't change pressure. I want to maintain the same pressure. It's gentle back, gentle down, and gentle through. What I end up seeing is people take it back quick, tighten the hands to stop it, bring it down quick, tighten the hands to start it, and then when they finish, they're so tight, I mean, and the wisdom teeth hurt. So it's the same grip pressure back, down, and through. All right, you can practice it, practice in your yard, you can practice at home, so you want to feel like your hands and arms are light, all right, the grip pressure then maintains itself. It stays the same. So now you know how a weak grip would look, You now you know how a strong grip would look. You know where your pressure point should be. You know how to determine the pressure points that you have. Also, you should know how to go out in the backyard and practice your grip pressure. Your grip pressure is important. I see a lot of grip pressure people that say, I just can't hit the ball very far. They're trying hard, but they're not getting the job done. So try those techniques. I think you'll like them.